All right, what's going on, y'all? Let's do three, six. It's the same thing, right? Determine the nodal displacements for this bar assemblage, um, the local element forces, and the reactions using the direct stiffness method. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, because we're dealing with two different um, properties of beams, right? We got E1 and E2, and they give us the values right here. We're gonna, this is gonna be a little bit more complicated, but we'll find a way to make it easy. So let's start off by kind of getting those values, right? Um, this is EA over L, and this is for element one, right? This is element one right here. This is two, and this is three, okay? So for element one, you're, you're gonna have a EA over L value, and for element two, and three we're gonna have another right so if you do the math right um ea over l for the first beam e1 is 30 times 10 to the 6 multiply that by area that is 60 times 10 to the 6 and then divided by 50 so 60 divided by 50 is 1.2 times 10 to the 6 and that unit is in pound per inch okay uh, it's a stiffness matrix, so it has to be force per displacement. Um, for 2 and 3, same thing, right? So it's 10 times 2, that's 20, divided by 30, that is 0 0.67 now, times 10 to the 6, uh, pound over inch. Now, we round it here, this is technically 0 0.66666, whatever, right? But, so the numbers we get, you'll see that they're not... Um, exact but that's okay because we're just rounding that's fine um but let's just go ahead and continue like we would any other so the common value between these are the common not denominator numerator i think it's numerator right it's been a while but you could factor out a 10 to the 6 from both of them right so that's exactly what we're gonna do so check this out it's four nodes one two three four so we have four reactions at node one at node two, at node three, and at node four. Give myself some space because F2x is a big force number, so right there. We're gonna factor out, again, now we're gonna do the, the matrix, but instead of writing a 1.2 times 10 to the six, times 10 to the six for every single one, we're just gonna factor it out. So 10 to the six. Okay, and again, for this problem, in this case, because the modulus of elasticity was different. If they were all the same, you could just factor out the whole EA over L, assuming everything's the same, right? But in this case, um, uh, 30 inches for these two, and then 50 inches for this one, then the modulus of elasticity was different uh, compared to these two. So let's just go ahead and do the stiffness matrix. One, two, three, four, right? Your nodes. This is one, two, three, and four. Okay, and then your displacement vector. So it's U1, U2, U3, and U4. So let's go ahead and start doing the matrix. So the first one, we're doing the first element. So this is our value, 1.2. Again, it would have been 1.2 times 10 to the 6, but we factored 10 to the 6 out, so it's 1.2. And it's between nodes 1 and 2. So it's 1, 2, and then 1, 2. So these four slots. We have 1.2, negative 1.2, negative 1.2, and 1.2. Now let's do the next one. The next one is element 2. So we use 0.67 now, and it's between nodes 2 and 3. So go to 2, 3. 2, 3, and we add 0.67 to this one. 1 1.2 plus 0.67 is 1.87, right? Uh, negative 0 0.67, negative 0 0.67, and 0 0.67. Finally, the last one, we use 0 0.67 because it's element 3. It's between nodes 2 and 4. So 2, 4, 2, Four. So we're going to add 0 0.67 again here. If you do that, 1.87 plus 0 0.67, that's going to give you 2.54. 2.54 plus 0 0.67 is 0 0.54. 0 0.54 plus 0 0.67 is 0 0.54. 0 0.54 plus 0 0.67 is 0 0.54. 
Um, this is going to be negative 0 0.67, negative 0 0.67, and 0 0.67. Fill in the zeros where you didn't get anything, and we are done with the stiffness matrix. Okay, now let's start doing the boundary conditions. So, we see that U1, U3, and U4 are never going to move. No matter how much force is applied at the system, this will always be zero. And that makes our life a lot easier, believe it or not, because now we're only focused on U2. Um, right there. Okay, um, next we will do the forces, right? We don't know the force at one, we don't know it at three, we don't know it at four, but we do know it at two, that is a positive 16,000. So let's go ahead and fill that in, right? 16,000 at node two. And again, you know you're doing something right if you either know force or displacement at that node. So in this case, for one, three, and four, we don't know the force, but we do know displacement. And then at the other node, node two, we know the force and we don't know displacement. So that means we're doing something right. Now let's go ahead and continue right with the equations. So let's do the first one, force one X. That is equal to 10 to the six, don't forget it. I forgot it the other day, remember? Uh, now we could open parentheses. 1.2 times zero plus negative 1.2 times U2. Negative 1.2 times U2. Uh, zero times zero, zero times zero. Close parentheses. Um, next one is 16,000. And then 10 to the six, right? Equals 10 to the six. Don't forget that 10 to the six, okay? Um, negative 1.2 times 0, 2.54 times U4, times U2, I'm sorry, U, not U4, and then 0, 0. Next one, F3X, that is equal to 10 to the 6 again, times negative 0 0.67 times U2. U3 and U4 and U1, they're all 0, so you will never have any value there. So F4X is equal to, same, negative 0 0.67 times U2. Now, before I continue, it kind of makes sense, right, um, that uh, once we, so look, let's just, um, before, my bad, before we continue, let's look at the system for a second. At node two, we are pulling to the right, okay? We're going this way at 16,000 pounds. Now, that means this beam right here is gonna get stretched, so it's gonna wanna go back to its original spot. This one's gonna get compressed, so it's kind of pushing back at that force, and right here too. So I could already tell, just by kind of looking at it, unless there's something I'm missing, that these values will be negative, because we're assuming positive x directions this way. So we're gonna get negative forces. And U2, if you move it, if you push it this way to the right with these 16,000, U2 is going to move some distance, right? It's going to go that way. So that means U2 is going to be positive. Now, does that make sense? If U2 is positive uh, for all of these, right? F1x, this negative, is going to give us a negative force. This negative is going to give us a negative force because U2 is positive. We don't know what number that is, obviously, right? But it's going to move that way. So yeah, we're on the right track. That's kind of cool to see, well, at least for me, right? But so this is equation one. Equation two, equation three, equation four. All right, the trick is, remember, to stay away from the equations where you don't know force. So one, three, and four, stay away from them. And luckily enough, we could find U2 just with equation two. So step three, using equation two, we will get U2 is equal to 16,000 divided by a million divided by 2.54, U2 is going to give you 0 0.00623 inches, okay? So we found U2 just like that. All right, so it's positive, right? It's moving to the right when you apply this force. You could now find every single other force using U2, right? U2, 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 just plug it in. F1X will give you negative seven four seven six pounds going to the right 
and that just means f1x is equal to positive 7476 pounds going to the left. So just like that, we found f1x. All right now the next one, um, f3 and f4, they're equal to each other, right? 10 to the 6, negative 0 0.67. So f3x equals f 4x and that is equal to plug in your numbers you will get negative 4174 pounds going to the right now that is the same as saying f3x is equal to f4x going positive 4174 pounds to the left so boom that's cool and they're equal to each other kind of makes sense because the system is symmetrical Right, these two are equal the beams. This one's just one of them on the other side. So that means there's 4174, uh, uh, right there. 4174, 4174, and positive 7476. If you add them all up, all these three, 7476, 4174 times two, right? Um, you will get some of the forces in the x direction is equal to. 15824.2 going this way. 0 0.2 because there was more to this number, just FYI. Um that's good, right? 16,000 going to the right, roughly 16,000 going to the left. You'll never get exact numbers because we rounded here. That's kind of what I meant at the beginning of the video. Um I can't remember if I rounded this. Yeah, I did 62999 something. But Assuming you were to put those crazy 10 digit numbers right here and here too, you'll get a nice 16,000. But uh, it's verified, right? That means these forces make sense. Finally, it says find the forces in each element. So let's go ahead and do step six. First one, we're gonna use this EAL. It's the first element. So we're gonna use 1.2 times 10 to the six and it's between nodes one and two. So let's do that force 1x, force 2x is equal to EAL of the first element. So that is 1.2 times 10 to the 6. And it's 1, negative 1, 1, negative, uh, negative 1 right here. Again, if you don't like factoring this stuff out, I suggest you do because you're going to be writing a lot. But you could just throw this in and it would have been... 1.2 times 10 to the 6, negative 1.2 times 10 to the 6, negative 1.2 times 10 to the 6, and 1.2 times 10 to the 6. And then finally, it's between nodes 1 and 2 again, so it's U1 and U2. U2 was 0 0.00623, and that is 0 for U1. So you go ahead and start solving. So I'm going to write it out just so you can see it, but for the first element only, but for the next ones, I won't. Because I'm assuming you know how to do it, right? So it's 1.2 times 10 to the 6, right? Then it's 1 times 0, which is 0, plus negative 1 times 0 0.00623. So that is just negative 0 0.00623. Do the math. You will get... Uh, negative seven four seven six pounds going to the right. Okay, it's the first one. All right, now the second one f two x of element one is again one point two times ten to the six. Negative one times zero, one times this one right here. So that is just positive zero point zero zero six two three. And then it's the same thing, just the sign switches. So it's gonna be seven, four, seven, six. Let me move it up in case you can't see. Seven, four, seven, six pounds going to the right. So cool. We got the first element. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the second element, right? Um, it's the second element is between notes two and three. So we're gonna have F two X f3x 
and that's going to equal to the second element ea over l so it's 0 0.67 0 0.67 times 10 to the 6 and that is 1 negative 1 negative 1 1 and the displacement is u2 u3 so u2 was 0 0.00623 u3 was 0 and we'll go ahead and solve it right um f2x of element 2 is equal to do the math right one times this and then plus negative one times zero so 0 0.00623 times one times this so that's going to give you negative no positive positive got mixed up positive four one seven four pounds going to the right and similarly for f3x the only thing that changes is the sign because of negative one now f3x of element two is equal to negative four one seven four pounds going to the right and there you go so it's this one and this one finally the last element it's between nodes two and four again you got to check the nodes okay it's not between three and four two and four so now you're going to have F2X again, and then F4X. Okay. That's going to equal this third element is this value, 0 0.67 times 10 to the 6. 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1. Move it up. Um, and then that displacement is U2 and U4. U2 is 0 0.00623, and that is 0 for U4. Now again, let's do it. So F2x of element 3 is the uh, same thing, right? It's the same answers as these. So it's 4174 pounds going to the right, and F4x of element 3 is equal to negative 4174 four pounds going to the right so that's it we're done um let's go ahead and verify these answers though let's make sure they make sense so <clears throat> the way you verify these answers is the sum of all the nodal forces of every element have to equal the big force so let me let me show you what i mean let's do the first one force one x the big force it's positive 7476 going, well actually it's negative 7476 going to the right, okay? Let's focus on the one going to the right. So that means when you add all the little F1s here, all of them from every element, you should get this right here, negative 7476 to the right. There's one right here, F1, right? Negative 7476. There's, that's F2, that's F2, F3, F2, F4. So there's only one and that equals the big one. So that means that one's correct, okay? Second one, when you add all the local element forces at node two, you should get the big um, F2. In this case, big F2 is 16,000. So if you add all the F2s, you got one right here, 7476 plus this one, 4174, plus this one, 4174, Add them all up, you will get 15824, and that's roughly the same as 16,000. So F2 is verified, okay? Now let's do node three. Node three is equal to negative 4174 to the right. So that means when you add all the F3s, you should get that negative 4174, and that's the only one, the only F3. So that one's verified. Now do the same for F4. It's the same number, negative 4174 to the right for F4, and it only pops up once right here, and that is negative 4174. So that means we did it right. Um, the problem is correct. Everything made sense, so hope you learned it. That's the bottom, and that's the top.